Hi everyone, my name is Day and welcome to Spanglish Generation. Today's video is really a personal story that I want to share with you because it represents the most difficult thing I've had to learn in my life. You may think it's silly because to so many kids, this is the second nature thing, but to me it wasn't. And I'm talking about learning English. When I came to the US from Cuba, I had a really bad time adjusting, not because Cuba was any better, because it wasn't, but because I didn't understand the language. I was eight when I came from Cuba, and to most kids, learning a second language is something that takes maybe a year. After that, they're transferred from the ESL classes, which is the English as a second language, to regular classes because they can fully communicate in English. It didn't take me a year, two years, or three years. It took me six long years to be considered ready to leave the ESL classes and be incorporated in regular classes. It didn't help that we moved from the US to Dominican Republic about a year into being here in the first place. And I was around nine at the time. So it did set me back, but it is the norm for kids to catch on way quicker than I did. It was extremely frustrating to watch the sitcoms at the time and have no idea what that laughter in the background was about. I remember my very first time at Redland Elementary here in South Florida. It was my first school after I moved back to the States from the Dominican Republic. And I remember clearly the teacher introducing me to the class, presenting me to the class and saying that I didn't speak any English. I remember as if it was right now, not only the feeling, but the sound. The whole class went, oh in unison, as if they had been cued by a conductor. I remember crying because I didn't understand the textbooks. I didn't get the exams. I couldn't do anything on the computer. My dad tried to get help for me and somebody to tutor me here and there, but it just wasn't sticking for some reason. I began to think that this was just too, way too hard for me and that I would never learn English. What if I had a disability? What if I never learned the language? I began to think there was seriously something wrong with me. So I was about 12 in Miami Springs Middle School. I moved around a lot. I was sick of crying over failing tests. I was sick of not understanding. I was sick of pronouncing chair as share or saying beach like bitch. So I started writing in a diary that I had at the time, which I read for years and years over and over until up to about 10 years ago when I lost it in one of my many moves. I wrote about my determination to learn English because if other people around me, other kids had learned English, people that had come from other countries way later than I did, after I did, and they could read and write and understand why couldn't I understand it? Why couldn't I learn it? I pushed myself to write only in English and it was a complete disaster, but I was not giving up. I was really, really determined. I was not only going to learn this damn thing, I was going to master it. And okay, I haven't mastered it yet, but I am proud of myself because finally at 14 years old, I was considered good enough to move on to regular classes. And today, I watch many reruns of the sitcoms, uh, Full House, and it feels incredible, incredible to actually understand what they're laughing about. I still don't get what they're laughing about sometimes, but that has nothing to do with the language. Today, I have decided to switch a lot of my content that's Cuba related to English because it is necessary to raise awareness. Most of the content available is in Spanish, and I'm so proud of myself to be able to speak a language that is required at this time. It's of the essence. The 11 year of me would have never thought you'd be communicating in English in front of a camera. By now I've done commercials, infomercials, and even seminars in English. And if I'm honest, I still struggle with understanding language context. That's why I keep researching and learning because communicating isn't enough. You need to communicate effectively. And that's my goal, it's always been. Learning a new language isn't easy for everyone, especially adults when they come to the US and they have a family to take care of. They have to work one or two, three jobs. They have little time left to learn a new language, to study, to focus, to concentrate, to practice. 
I was a kid. I had all the time in the world and it was still very difficult for me. We all face different challenges and sometimes it may feel like everyone is ahead of us and we will never overcome that which seems so difficult. But trust me when I tell you, if you set your mind to it, you can do it. Today I'm proudly fluent in both English and in Spanish. And I overcame so many fears and so many difficulties because I didn't give up by feeling sorry for myself. Whatever it is you're struggling with, face it and tackle it. And if you see someone that's facing something and they're still struggling after trying their best, please, please be patient with them and understand it must be really hard to be in their shoes. I hope this story inspires you to keep going and realize that not everything is what it seems. A lot of people think that I was born speaking English or that I learned it at a very early age. Never judge a book by its cover for positive or negative. Let the story tell itself and then draw your own conclusions. Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and of course, thank you for your support by subscribing. You can do it. I love you. Now is my time to shine. Let's when your time comes, don't postpone it. When others doubt and out, you don't condone it. Truth be told. Yourself is your toughest opponent. When your moment comes, grab hold and own it. Never let go.